Hey everybody, welcome back to Code with Vinny. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to build a serverless CRUD API on AWS. For those of you that don't know, CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. And these operations are essential for building any complex application. In this tutorial, I really wanna focus on AWS and getting you familiar with these essential services. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time going over the actual code of the Lambda function. We're actually gonna be spending most of our time in the AWS console. And if you want the AWS Lambda code itself, I have a link to the GitHub repo in the description below. So just to give you a quick overview of this tutorial, we're actually gonna cover five AWS services, including API Gateway, AWS Lambda, DynamoDB, CloudWatch, and IAM. IAM stands for Identity and Access Management. So this is what we're gonna to use to give us permissions. CloudWatch is a service that records logs for us, so we can use this to debug our Lambda function if something isn't working correctly. DynamoDB is a serverless database. Lambda is a service that allows us to run functions serverlessly on the cloud. And API Gateway will act as a middleman between our UI and our actual application, so the Lambda function. So if we just go over this flow real quick, you can see we have a user interface that's gonna interact with our API Gateway. Our API gateway is gonna pass that request on to our Lambda function. IAM is gonna give our Lambda function the permissions required to update our Dynamo database and send logs to CloudWatch. And like I said, our Lambda function is gonna actually make the changes to our database. Then our Lambda function is gonna return a request and the API gateway will return that request to our user. So now that we understand the way our application works, let's go ahead and go to AWS. Once you sign into the AWS console, go ahead over to DynamoDB. And we're just gonna go ahead and create a table. And we're just gonna call this table tasks. And now you can see it's asking us for a partition key. In DynamoDB, a partition key is basically a main identifier for each item in a table. So basically just think of it as a unique ID for every entry. So we're just gonna keep things simple and just call this ID. And we're just gonna leave the rest as default and click create table. So as you can see, it successfully created our task table for us. And if we click here, we can actually go look at our table. Now we don't have anything inserted in our database yet, but later we can use this explore table items to go see what tasks we've inserted in our DynamoDB table. And because DynamoDB is a NoSQL database, we don't even have to define a schema. We can just get right to inserting items into our table. That means we're done with our Dynamo setup. So let's go ahead and head over to Lambda. I like to go ahead and open each service in a separate tab just so we can go back to them pretty quick. So now let's go ahead and just create our Lambda function. And it's asking for a function name, so I'm just gonna go ahead and call this task crud handler. And we're just gonna go ahead and scroll down to permissions. And we want to select create a new role with basic Lambda permissions. That's already selected, so we can go ahead and create our function now. So as you can see, we've successfully created our Lambda function. And the next thing we need to do is give our Lambda function permissions so it can make changes to DynamoDB and CloudWatch. So to do that, we're gonna go down to configuration and then we're gonna go to permissions. And then we're gonna click on our role name right here. And this takes us to a different AWS service called Identity and Access Management or IAM. And this is the current role that's attached to our Lambda function. And as you can see, we already have one policy or permission for our role. And it's this AWS Lambda basic execution role. We are gonna need more permissions than that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to add permissions and then attach policies. Each of these policies will give us more permissions to modify other AWS services. So we're just gonna go in here and search Dynamo DB full access right here. We're gonna select that. And then we're also gonna do CloudWatch 
logs full access. Okay, so after you have both of those selected, we're going to hit add permissions. And now we've successfully added those policies to our role. And we can see that right here. Now we want to go back to our Lambda function. And we can go ahead and modify the code for our Lambda now. And like I mentioned earlier, I don't want to spend too much time diving into the actual code of this Lambda function. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it. But like I said, you can take this from the GitHub repo that I have linked. And we can just walk through this really quick. So we're importing a bunch of stuff. We don't need any node modules because all this stuff is just coming from the AWS SDK. So we're basically just creating a bunch of handlers for our get, post, patch, and delete, right? And down here you can see the actual code that would be modifying uh, or querying Dynamo. So right here, the scan command is gonna get all of our tasks from our task table. And this put command is gonna insert a new task into our dynamo table and patch will update into our dynamo table and our handle delete is obviously going to delete a task from our dynamo table so pretty simple stuff nothing too crazy and we can just go ahead and deploy that should be just about it for our lambda function so we're going to go ahead and go to api gateway and I'm going to open that in a new tab as well. And we're going to create our API gateway. So go down to REST API and hit build. And we're just going to call this task API. You can leave this as new API and we're going to just hit create API. Now that our API gateway has been created, we can go and create a resource. And we're just going to give the resource name task and make sure you enable cores. Go ahead and create that resource. Now under this task resource, we're gonna add some methods right now. And the first method type, like I said earlier, is gonna be get. Make sure for all of these, you enable this Lambda proxy integration. And if we go here, it's gonna say the name of our Lambda function. So let's go ahead and select that. So basically this is saying whenever we hit our API gate, gateway endpoint, it's gonna invoke our Lambda function. It's exactly what we want here. And we can just create the method. So as you can see under our task resource, we have a get method. We want to go back under our task resource and create more methods. So we're gonna repeat these steps for all of the other request types. So we'll go ahead and do post next. Enable that, select our Lambda function, and create the method again. And like I said, I'm just gonna keep repeating these steps. Do patch this time. Lambda proxy integration, create method. And one more for delete. And we've created all of our methods under our resource. Now, if we wanna be able to test this out, we need to make sure that we deploy our API. So I'm just gonna hit this deploy and it's gonna tell us to create a new stage. And I'm just gonna call this production and deploy it. So if we open up this stage production, we have our task resource and all of the endpoints. So if I go to our get call right here, it will give us a URL so we can invoke that get call. So let's go ahead and test that out. I just copied it right there. And if we look right here, it's really small, but it's just an empty array. That's actually exactly what we expect because we don't actually have any tasks inside our DynamoDB yet. So let's go ahead and test our endpoints and add some tasks to our table using postman if you haven't ever used postman before it's basically a tool that makes it easy to test test your apis so i just went and created a get post patch and delete request right here 
and I just put in our invoke URL for our API gateway. And so if I hit our get request, you can see that I get an empty array, so it's working. And let's go ahead and try to create a post. So I'm gonna hit send and task created successfully. So if we go back to Dynamo and refresh, we can see that we actually have a task this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just open that. And you can see it has the name that I gave it in the request body and it's completed is set to false. So it's working just as intended. Let's go back to Postman now and we're gonna do our patch request. So I'm actually gonna need the ID if I want to be able to update a resource. So I'm gonna steal this right here and go back to Postman and just replace this ID. And we're gonna change the name to wash car and set the completed status to true. And it says updated successfully and it returned our new task. So if I go to DynamoDB and hit refresh, we can see we have wash car and it's completed. So perfect. And the last thing we're gonna to wanna to do is test out that delete endpoint that we created. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this ID and just add the ID of our actual task. And task successfully deleted. We can see name wash car sending back all the information that used to be in our task. And if we go back to explore items, we don't have any more items inside of our task table. So there's still one last thing I wanna show you and that's AWS CloudWatch, which is another service. And the best way to demo that for you is to actually go back into our code and intentionally put an error. So CloudWatch is gonna allow us to see our logs from our Lambda function. So if something runs in here and breaks, we need a way to debug it, right? So I'm just gonna go in here and write some code that I know is gonna break. And if we go and deploy our Lambda function now that we have some breaking code inside of our get handler, we should be able to hit the get endpoint now and it should break. So I'm gonna go back to Postman, hit get, and we get an internal ser server error. But notice we don't actually know what the error message is. So if we wanna see that, we need to use the CloudWatch service. So I'm gonna go over here and go CloudWatch. And let's go ahead and open that up. We're gonna head over to log groups and we're gonna select the name of our Lambda function, which is task crud handler. Go inside there. And if we click on the topmost log, that should be the most recent. And let's go see if we could find something, yep invoke error right here cannot access Vinny before initialization so we tried to invoke a variable before it was initialized and this is just a really helpful tool that we can use when trying to debug our lambda functions so just to recap we went and created our api gateway that gives us a url that we can send http requests to in order to invoke our aws lambda our lambda is actually what's running our code and has a bunch of handlers that are gonna actually go and make updates to our database. Our DynamoDB that we created has a table of tasks that actually is our database. We have IAM that's giving our Lambda function permissions to make changes to DynamoDB and write logs to CloudWatch in the first place. And CloudWatch, as we just went over, gives us a place to record our logs. So that's about it for this one. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.